Right. <laughs> Definitely recording. Yes. Well, we're entering week five now and uh, lockdown continues, so that is impacting the work that's getting done here. That's something we haven't discussed yet, which we've been having to contend with. Uh, we've had two of them now, and that's these little bastards. As you know, the major thing that we're working on at the moment is this cock up with the P-bracket. Rats, every cruiser's nightmare. Although it hasn't really been a nightmare for us because we had Millie on board for up until a year ago and she kept them at bay. Katie should bring one on as a present. So anyway, rats, yeah, loads of them in the yard. Now you just mentioned the pea bracket. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's going on there. <laughs> you don't want to know. Oh. <laughs> I did mention it briefly in last week's episode and I asked anyone if they knew what the possible problem was that we were going to present ourselves with which we ended up doing. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a bit. One thing I'm thinking of doing is taking the flexible coupling apart. Um, it's been, what, six, seven years since that gave, got a clean and uh, the old paintwork's peeling away. A little bit rusty, so uh, we have to take it apart and the two main bolts go through this bulkhead here um, with rubber shims to provide some kind of flexibility. And then of course, at the other end, it's attached uh, via four bolts onto the gearbox. So I think we've got to take those off first and then we'll take this out and we should be able to knock out those bolts and lift it up. I managed to get the uh, flexible coupling out. It's pretty straightforward, except they were Imperial nuts and I couldn't get my socket set onto them. So I don't have a complete spanner set of Imperial spanners, which is a bit, uh, a bit of a shame, I can normally get away with the socket set anyway. So I um, got it out and as one well, is now giving it a little tidy up. So it was pretty rusty. The paint job that we got at PSS all those years ago was, well, it didn't last too long, but then to be fair, it does get very uh, salty and uh, wet in that area sometimes. So uh, he's now just chipping away at the paint uh, before we uh, clean it up, put the rust converter on, prime it and paint it up again. Tell us, what's, what's the procedure you're advising me on in treating my flexible coupling? With the rust converter? Yeah. It's always best just to get a thin film of oxidation. So it gives something for the rust converter to work on rather than just be a steel, shiny polished steel. And then um, wash it off between coats, give it two or three coats washed off between, washed off again at the end and then the primer. Flexible coupling looks great. Mm. You still haven't told us though about the P-bracket. Yes, I'm kind of skirting the subject because it's embarrassing. Fortunately, we have a big company trying to sell you a product with an ad break, so I get to avoid it a little bit more. Now, some of you might have been thinking whilst you were seeing that P-bracket being welded, isn't that going to warp the actual bracket container itself uh, with all that welding going on? And it did. So now I can't get the cutlass bearing in. You can see in the top left corner at about 11 o'clock, a gap. And that's the side the weld was on. And as that was welded there, so it effectively warped that part of the uh, P-bracket. It was quite obvious actually. I mean, hindsight, it's a great thing, isn't mm. it? Forget it, no point in crying over spilt milk. How did you resolve the issue? Well, fortunately we had Jackson. Every boatyard has a genius, mm. don't they? They always have someone who knows their shit. And Jackson is one of those people. He's uh, a metal expert. Uh, you'll see more of him in next week's episode when he solves yet another issue that we have down below on Esper. But uh, what he did this time was heat up the cutlass bearing bracket, the tube that hangs off the P-bracket, 
Uh, heat it up very gently, of course, because you shouldn't heat up metal too much because you impact on its structural integrity. He clamped it and kind of bent it back to close enough to its shape. He then got the big guns out and used a grinder and with various different pieces on the end of that grinder, very slowly ground away inside that tube. And every now and then he'd try and put the cutlass bearing in, he'd get it in a little bit further, grind away a little bit more. And in the end, I think it took, it was a good day, maybe two days worth of just very gentle grinding. But um, anyway, Jackson solved the problem. Brilliant, Jackson. In the words of the great Sam Pilgrim, today is going to be epic. And that is because we're going to be putting our whole drive system back in place. As you can probably see behind me, we have the cutlass bearing back in situ. This means that the boys have managed to grind it back nicely. Um, there's a little bit of a gap between the cutlass bearing and the tube itself, but uh, it's still very tight fit. Uh, we put the shaft back in just to check its alignment. Seems okay so far. There doesn't seem to be any play in the cutlass bearing, so that's all good. Um, now I've got a new cutlass bearing. We've got the old one in at the moment, so I've got to take that out, take the shaft out. We've then got to go upstairs and get into the horrible cupboard take out the old bellows from the old stripless seal, put in the new bellows, put the shaft back in after putting the new cutlass bearing in and so on. So the idea was we were going to try and get the shaft and the whole drive system back in place. So I took the shaft over to Jackson who's the expert over here in the workshop and he put it on two rollers, had a look to find out that actually it's not straight. There's a slight kink in it, so uh, I've said to him, can you let us know when you're going to straighten it on the press, which is how he does it. Uh, he does it all by sight, I think, and here he is right now working on it. Thank you so much for everyone watching. Also our supporters, we've had a few new rum funders, yeah. uh, Patreons, and FTB mates, so thank you guys for coming on board. We really appreciate it. Liz has said previously, these are hard times, but we somehow managed to put out weekly episodes <laughs> for your entertainment. So if you would like to support us, we're on Patreon, we've got FTB mates, and there's our rum fund as well. Thank you so much. Rats, 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 rats. Anyway, more on rats later in another episode. No, we, there isn't more on rats later in another episode. We do episode. loads of stuff on rats. No, we don't. No? No, no. <clears throat> Try not to go on about it too long as well. I've explained what the problem yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, you put me past my stroke. Don't say anything. Okay, I'm not going to go.